Yes, a very good morning for all of you. Good morning, Gangadhar. Good morning, Kavi, Sanitya, Aditya, Prajwal, Shruti, Saidulu, Jagan, Legend, Satya, Hena, Srisha, Sukanya, Pragdishwaran, Oinam, Pranesh, Bhavya. A very good morning to all of you. And actually there is a very um, number of students they asked me doubt like so where this uh, recorded session of this live is available. So many students you are not getting this video I think so they are posting me under uh, comments and as well as they are posting me they are messaging me in telegram and whatsapp regarding this Hindu analysis. So after if you are not uh, if you are not attending live session so in YouTube if you are entering into our channel Rathor Science Academy. So here in this live section, you can see this videos. Okay. So this thing I want to make you clarify. Okay. So even though if you are not attending live, so this session will be present in this live session. So if you click on this live, so you can see what are the live sessions that we have conducted. Okay. Yes. Good morning, Pranesh, Red Gaming, Malikarjuna. Sai Rama, Vinay, Sukanya, Talwar, Pavan, Danamma, Kesu, Subash, Pinky, Abjit, Varsha, Akash. So, shall we start the today's session? Tell me, shall we start the today's session? Are you ready to give answers? Yes, tell me, are you ready to give answers? Yes, right? You came up here with 100% Josh, right? Yes, today we are going to discuss current fights of 9th September 2023. And whatever the current fights we are discussing, that will be important from both your UPSC and state public service examination point of view and even for other computer examination. Okay, so the first topic it is about Modi Biden welcome progress in different styles. So from which subject point of view this article is important? Yes, from IR, Sanatoy, very good. So, from international relation point of view, so we have to read this article. And here you have to know some important facts regarding this G20. And here we have to focus on India-US relations. So, most of the articles that we are going to discuss in this session will be based on IR only. Okay, there are a lot of articles regarding this G20. And even Asia, India-Asian summit. Okay, there are a lot of articles and even most of the paper it is filled with political articles. So, it will be taking not more than 45 minutes to complete today's paper for you if you are following current affairs daily. So, here we have to see these two important points that is G20 and India US. So, you know about the facts regarding this G20, right? Yes, you know about some facts regarding this G20, right? So, do you know about African Union? So, what is the recent update regarding African Union in G20? Okay, Shruti. Can you make videos for IR static part and current part separately? Hena? Already static part is taken by Tanya ma'am. You can see those videos in our website. Yes, not partnership. It is talking about membership for African Union. Yes, yesterday we had discussion on this. India pushed African Union to join this G20. Yes, African Union is going to become a member of G20. Yes, very good Pranesh. 
so if you're attending live session daily and if you're revising that day current efforts on that day then it will be decreasing burden on you so that you can remember these things or these issues for a long time also yes au is 21st member of this g20 so now let us see this topic in detail and this is very important and you can expect question regarding this african union also so as i said this topic is important from your international relations so international relations which comes in the gs paper too and actually many students they think that this international relation it is only the part of your mains not from prelims correct but in prelims also you can get questions from this international relations so in prelims you can expect questions regarding map based and even regarding groupings in news that will comes under your current affairs part okay don't only read this international relations from your mains point of view even you have to know the facts from your prelims also so that comes under world geography but here afghanistan map related question which appeared in 2022 and in 2023 ukraine related map question which came kavi okay so these are the issues from our international relations okay is it clear kavi yes let us move on so here context says our prime minister and the us president they came up with the completion of notification process okay and we are coming up with partnership coordination between india and us so between india and us we are coming up with partnership that is regarding general electric aerospace and hindustan aeronautic limited and with this coordination between this us and india so we are going to manufacture ge4 f414 jet engines in india so what is significance of this move so whenever we are going for increasing of domestic manufacturing how it will be helpful for our india so whenever we are going for increasing of domestic manufacturing so what will be the advantages so babi asked one question ma'am do the other nations opinion doesn't matter only india is pushing african union to join right what about the other members nations are they going to agree so if the other nation countries agree then only they will be getting membership okay bavya and even south africa is also the member okay so we can improve our security very good security resilience next point employment generation very good next yes we can reduce imports very good point next no dependence on other country that means we can reduce dependence next whenever we are decreasing import that will also helps to reduce our what happen we can reduce our import dependence and even that will increase forex reserves yes next next tell me i am expecting one important point i am not getting from you so it will also helpful for made in india and we can achieve atmanirbhar bharat we can achieve atmanirbhar bharat in defense sector and even one more important point so do you know about technology transfer that we are going to get from us 
Do you remember this topic? So till now we got technology transfer only from Russia. But recently US said that we are going to transfer technology. So this is one example that we are going to get technology transfer. So this is very important point. Okay, can you add any more points anyone? Yes, increase self-defense power. Okay, Jagan. Next, outdated technology will sometime get, yes. We can have good collaboration. Very good. Okay, so these are the points that you have to remember. So whenever we are coming up with collaboration with any country, so what might be the advantages? So this part that we discussed now that you gave answers so this will be important from mains so this is nothing but this is called as analysis yes my students able to do analysis now i'm very happy yes we are also going to get investments very good okay is it clear shall we move on Yes, students tell me, is it clear? Okay, legend. Okay, Santoy. Okay, Prakash Shruti. Yeah. Okay. So now let us move on. So this is the one important thing that you have to focus. And here let us try to see India-US relations. So whenever you are writing India-US relations, you have to write answer in multi-dimensional way. For example, you have to write trade relations, economic relations, defense relations. Okay, if there are any exercises between India and US, you have to address all those things. So that will be important from again your means. Yes, increasing good relations. That comes under collaboration itself again. Okay, Rupa. So here the first and the foremost thing here is we can write about economic progress. So whenever I'm talking about economy or economical relations between India and US, one thing that always strikes into my mind and I feel very happy is, so with US, India is enjoying trade surplus. Okay, so if I read this statement anywhere, I feel like I'm proud to be an Indian. So as you know that US is a well-developed country, so with that country, if you see the trade, yes, we are exporting a lot than importing. So we are enjoying trade surplus with US. So what is the meaning of trade surplus? Okay, Kavi, my question is, what is trade surplus? Anyone? It helps in counter China cross-border. How, Aditya? Yes, more exports than import. Okay, I will explain this concept. What is trade surplus and trade deficit? This trade. So, whenever we are talking about trade, which includes two components. So, first one is imports. And second one is export. So we have import and export. So these are the components in our trade. So whenever we're talking about trade between two countries, for example, this is country one and this is country two. So these two countries are doing trade. That means there are imports and exports between these two countries. Correct. So here we will come across two keywords. One is trade deficit. And second one is trade surplus trade deficit and trade surplus so trade deficit means imports are more compared to that of exports so imports are more compared to that of exports so this condition is called as trade deficit so whenever exports are more compared to imports that is called as trade surplus 
So my question is with which country we are having trade deficit? So can your question is why still India is called as developing country? Because if you see in the number of indices like human development index, hunger index and democracy index, press freedom index. So in every index India is ranking very bad. And even lot of challenges to are present before India like poverty, hunger, malnutrition, education, health, etc. So because of all those reasons, so India is not up to mark to reach the status of developed society or developed country. Yes, very good Pinky, Legend, Hena, Satya, Swarambal, Pranay, Mahesh. Okay, so with these countries like China, we have this trade deficit. Okay, I hope you understand Kavi, what is a trade deficit and trade surplus concept. I am moving. Okay, so if you see this economic progress, so bilateral trade, so bilateral means between these two countries, that is India and US. So bilateral trade between two countries has grown 10 times since 2000 onwards. So there is no need of remembering this number, okay, because if you are writing wrong number means it will entirely damage, okay, so you should not write numbers and listen until you are pretty much sure about that. And next important point here is India is the one of the largest trading partner. So US have one of the largest trading partner that is India and the most of the exports of US or for example whatever it is importing they are from the exports of India and we are enjoying trade surplus with this US. And next important point is defense cooperation. So in this sector, defense also, we have good participation, good, co good cooperation. So do you know any exercises between India and US? Yes, Youth Abhyas, next. So we have military exercises, naval exercises, Malabar, very good, Yudh Abhyas, Malabar and Quad. So just these are three important groupings, okay, Quad. And actually here you have to see defense exercises like we have military exercises between India and US that is Yudh Abhyas and Vajra Prahar. And even we have Quad Forum and Malabar exercise, okay, between India and US. So please let me know which are the countries part of this Malabar exercises. So which are the countries part of this Malabar? And which countries are part of Quad? Not France. Aditya, it is not France. India, US and Japan, it is for Malabar. And here in this squad, we have US, India, Japan and Australia. So these countries that you have to remember. Because in any other competitive examinations, you can get questions regarding the membership of groupings. Is it clear? And I want to give you one question that is while Indian and US policies are at variance in countries such as Russia, Iran and Afghanistan, China is the one of the interests that aligns these two countries together and hence offers a good possibility to cooperate comment. So if you see here this question is asking about the divergence of perspective. So I want to explain this uh, question. So here on one side we have India and another side we have US. So these two countries they have one common point that is to counter China. And these two countries they have diverged issues between them regarding this Iran. So actually India want to move towards Iran and to get oil at a very low cost. But here US says that if you go towards Iran we will be imposing cards on you. And US also came out of this Iran's nuclear deal 
or JCPOA that is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action and next one is Afghanistan. So US uh, moved or removed its troop from Afghanistan and after US removed its troop now Afghanistan is under control of Taliban. So from Afghanistan India is also having a threat of terror attacks. And next important one here is Russia. So here Russia and US they are adversaries. But here India and Russia they are always the friends. And we are getting discounted price that is oil, crude oil at discounted price, sunflower oil. And here US says that Russia is attacking Ukraine and it is opposite, right? But India is not talking about this Russia-Ukraine invasion in the different multilateral forums and organizations. So here this is the idea that you have to write in the body of your answer. Is it clear? Any doubt? Am I clear? Are you getting these points? How to correct current affairs and how to write an answer? Okay, Nagesh, Aditya, Sharni, Legend, Vinod. Okay, Srinivasan, Sukhanya. So, if you have any doubts, so please tell me so that I can repeat it once again. So, how many of you are going to write answer for this question? How many of you are going to write answer for this question? Take screenshot of this question first. Okay, Aditya, Srinivasan, Pinky, Santosh, Sukhanya. It is not at all confusing Sukhanya. So you have to write India's relation with Russia and US relation with Russia. India's relation with Iran and US relation with Iran. India's relation with Afghanistan and US relation with Afghanistan. And here how these two come towards because of this China. So China is one of the common interest of India and US. Can you say about Iran issue? So actually Iran. So US and Iran, they are adversary countries. Okay. So what happened? So US said that if, you, if any country is going to trade with Iran, so we are going to impose this card so that is countering American adversaries through sanction act. So we are going to impose sanctions. And earlier in 2015, here US and other countries, okay. So P5 plus 1 countries, they came up with Iran's nuclear deal to decrease the nuclear enrichment in Iran, okay. But what happened recently, US, during this Donald Trump period, he came out of this Iran's nuclear deal. Okay, let us see next topic. So most of the articles in our today's newspaper are political articles. They will not fetch you anything. So please don't waste much time on today's newspaper. So most of the articles regarding G20, Asian and many political articles that I see today. And you can directly move on to this editorial page. So this first topic it is about IPC, CRPC and Indian Evidence Act. So we had enough discussion regarding this amendments. Okay, we are going to abolish this IPC, CRPC and IEA by coming up with this uh, bill called as Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita, Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita and Bharatiya Sang, uh, Saksha Bill. Okay. So you have to see what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages. That's it. And we already discussed about that. What we have to write in way forward. So you can write either conclusion or way forward. So can you? Okay, so once the session is done of G20, then we will be coming up with highlights of this G20. Okay. And next here you can see this topic, it is regarding India, Asian. So you know that in this meet here, 12 point agenda, which is given by India. So already we saw that 12 point agenda here. And once again, we are going to see that topic. 
and here your homework is you have to see some facts regarding this asian and here this these two topics are not important and you can leave this ground zero page so on saturday you will be not getting opinion but in this ground zero so i found this image interesting so this is stupa so what is the meaning of stupa so in 2023 also in prelims so there was one question regarding this stupa so if you have gone through your uh, previous questions there was also a number of times question asked based on stupa and this stupa is very important so what is the meaning of stupa okay hena i will try hena if time permits stupa is a monument yes where relics of buddha is seen in stupa so how many types of stupas are there according to buddhism types it is not comes in a temple architecture satya please do correct buddhist body or they are called as relics okay srinivasan it is not as it is relics yes what are they so we have three type of stupas in our buddhism first one is sajiva stupa paribojaka stupa and uddeshika stupa okay you have to remember this sajiva stupa paribojaka stupa and uddeshika stupa spelling is wrong legend please do correct okay so now let us see those topics from our editorials yes this topic it is about india asian and again this topic is important from your international relations which comes in the gs paper too so here you can get uh, some facts based questions regarding this asian and today i want to give you homework that is you have to do refer some facts regarding this asian and we are going to see analysis based points here and already not yesterday's lecture we studied that why this asian is important or what is significance of asian to india right again we have to discuss that or not so do you remember those points or not regarding significance of asian to india yes tell me yes development of northeast states we can have good trade we can get international markets next so that will be help for socio economic condition development of northeast region increasing of connectivity increased our tourism and we can increase people to people contact and people to people ties we can also helpful for cultural development yes okay so it will also help to control terrorism cyber attacks proper sharing of data and information insurgency can be controlled is it clear so far okay so now let us see what is written in this article it is very important so actually we know that india came up with 12 point plan and this plan which is focusing on increasing of cooperation between india and asian countries so in asian we are having 10 membered countries that you have to remember and the proposal that is 12 point plan which aimed to focus on areas like connectivity trade digital transformation and establishment of rule based global order in this post covid 19 era so we are focusing on connectivity we are focusing on trade digital transformation and as well as rules based global order so in this post pandemic era okay and next important thing here is 
so our prime ministry also focused on creation of multi modal connectivity so in this multi modal multi modal means we are focusing on rail routes we are focusing on rails sea route and roadways etc so all these will come under multi modal connectivity so this multi modal connectivity will be very much helpful for improving of trade so whenever there is improving of trade automatically that will leads to economic development of the country okay and we are also going to link for example this is india so here we have southeast asia we are connecting with india and we are connecting with this west asian part and we are moving towards europe so here we are connecting this multi modal connectivity so that we can link south east asia india west asia and as well as europe so in this way you can also draw the diagram okay just a schematic diagram you can draw in your paper yes post covid means after covid okay so here you have to see which are the different projects that came up by india to improve the connectivity in this southeast asian nations like kalagan multimodal projects and trilateral projects okay and this one is india extended an offer to share its digital public infrastructure with its asian counterparts and even we are focusing on countering terrorism because india is facing this problem called as terrorism and even there is increased incidence of cyber threats or cyber attacks okay and we are focusing on misinformation etc and we are also focusing to address our challenges or concerns in international forums also and we are also trying to focus on increasing of voice of global south okay yes mission life gokul priya very good and during his speech in this east asia summit our prime minister he also focused on strengthening sovereignty so these are the keywords that you have to write in your answer that is strengthening of sovereignty territorial integrity of nations and you are also focusing on robust code of conduct in south china sea also and we need to follow this unclos unclos is nothing but united nations convention on law of seas so anyone do you know about this unclos what is it unclos so where can you see this unclos in 2022 prelims there was question regarding this unclos you can also check yes what it talks about it talks about jurisdiction of a country in a water for example if this is a country so here we have water or sea so till how many nautical miles this country jurisdiction will be allowed so that is given under this unclos so territorial integrity of that country which comes under 200 nautical miles till 200 nautical miles so above this 200 nautical miles it comes under high seas so high seas comes under international international water okay so we have territorial territorial waters internal waters contiguous water and exclusive economic zone so exclusive economic zone will be extended till 200 nautical miles okay very good sae jagan zipran sakti pranesh chinivasan pinki nagesh charan legend chinivasan yes very good good try and i want to give you one more mains question for practice wherever it is it will be possible i will be giving you the mains question so the question is asian and india need to strengthen their cooperation not just in terms of economic engagement but also in other fields so in this background to a light on 
ट्वेल्व पॉइंट प्रपोजल फॉर इंडो एशियन कॉपरेशन एंड इट्स बेनिफिट्स सो हाउ कैन यू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन टेल मी फास्ट सो वॉट विल बी द स्ट्रक्चर Yes, I'm waiting. Yes, about Asian introduction about Asian. Okay, very good. In body. So this question is saying that not only economic engagement we have to focus on other areas also. So this twelve point proposal that you have to remember and you have to remember and you have to write like we are not only focusing on engagement in economy, but here even we are focusing on other areas which are said in this twelve point agenda. Okay, and you have to write about what are the advantages of this twelve point agenda. That's it. Simple, right? Yes, you can give a map and body. Okay, is it done? Yes, very good. Is it simple or not? You are getting points. Are you getting points to write answer or not? Are you feeling confident? So why there is very less strength today? I don't know. Okay, thank you, Zipran. Yes, of course. It will be helpful to counter China also. So in conclusion, you can write about either way forward. or you can write like summing up of some important points that you wrote like for example you can write so because of this 12 point proposal so we can improve coordination between asia and india or else you can write through this uh, 12 point proposal you are not only focusing on economic engagement even in the other fields like environment science education health like that is it clear hena So, which map should include? So, we can write this map. Okay, and you can show the countries of this ASEAN. Is it clear, Aditya? Shall we move on? And next topic is we have a lot to bring. to the to the G20 table that is african union chief so here you have to focus on african union some basic facts already we discussed in our yesterday's lecture so once again let's have a recap on that topics and this topic is also important from international relations which comes under your gs paper too so you can expect both prelims and also mains based question here So I want to give you one prelims question. So after once this topic is done, so you have to actively participate in that question, and you have to give your answers. So here the context says that the African Union is confident of bringing a full member of G20 during this Delhi summit. Okay. So as you know that here African Union it is going to become the member of G20 soon. and here you have to see some facts regarding this african union so african union to join g20 so actually in the sherpa meeting near delhi so here the members of g20 agreed to provide membership to this african union in this g20 and here this african union will join this european union as the only two regional bodies in g20 so in g20 we have 19 countries 
plus European Union and we are going to add now African Union. So that means you are having two regional bodies. And the official renaming of G20 as G21, it is to be confirmed, but Indian officials sees this development as lasting impact on India's efforts during this G20 presidency. So as you all know that India is enjoying this presidency of G20 now, till December 31st we are going to have this, okay. And if, if we are including this African Union in this year means, so it will be like a, one of the important achievements for India. Okay. And next, if you see what are the key challenges here. So one of the important primary challenge here is resolving this geopolitical issue in the graft, particularly concerning United Nations General Assembly Resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So in this G20 summit, so one important issue they have to face here is Russia-Ukraine issue. So why it is one important challenge because so for this G20, India is now president, right? If you see India's voice regarding this Russia and Ukraine, so India is silent about this Russia-Ukraine issue. But now here as a president of this G20, so if other members are coming up with this issue, raising of this issue of Russia-Ukraine in this G20 summit, yes, India has to say something. So because of this, it is one primary challenge for India. And next one is there are also disagreements are there in some areas like climate financing, debt restructuring, fossil fuel phase out, carbon emission reductions. So there are also disagreements between the countries regarding these three important issues. And next one is there are also some tensions between India and Chinese delegates. So Chinese said that we are not going to attend. Right. So this is also an important issue. And if you see some facts regarding this African Union, so African Union, it is a continental body and how many members are there? So there are 55 members in this African Union. So it is very important fact. And this African Union was officially launched in 2002 and it is replaced its predecessor. So earlier before this African Union, there was Organization of African Unity. And this organization of African unity was founded in the year 1963 and this African Union came into existence from 2002. So these are the two important facts that you have to remember. And what is the important objective of this African Union to promote unity, to promote cooperation and development among African nations. So this is the one important aim of this African Union. And what is the important aim? Aim it is to strengthen political, economic and social integration among African countries. Okay. And one more important fact here is, so where is the headquarters located? Headquarters in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. So this is a very important point for other competitive examinations. So please make a note of this. So any doubts anyone? Am I fast? Because already these facts we discussed in earlier lecture. So because of that, I am moving fast. Okay, SAE, if time permits, I will bring map tomorrow. And prelims question is before you. One minute. Consider the following statements about African Union. It was officially launched in 2002. It promotes the integration of African economies and African Union aims to defend sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence of its member states. So how many of these statements about are current? So this is a new format which is asked in 2023 plans. So please let me know the answer for this question. So let us see who will give the correct answer. Pranay C, Sandeep C, Aditya only 2, Vinod Kumar 3, Hena C, Charan only 2, Sinatoy A, 
లెజెండ్ సి సాధ్యా బి సైతులు ఏ శ్రీనాథ్రి కవి సి ప్రజ్వల్ ఏ సుకన్య ఓన్లీ టూ నేహ సి శక్తి బి సంధ్యా సి జగన్ బి పింకీ సి కేసు బి యూపీఎస్సి ఏ శ్రీనివాసన్ ఆల్ త్రీ బసురాజన్ బి దిల్కుష్ సి ఎస్ఏఈ టూ ఎస్ఏఈ డోంట్ యాక్ట్ స్మార్ట్ యు ఆర్ గివింగ్ టూ ఆన్సర్స్ టూ పేర్స్ టూ ఆర్ త్రీ సో గివ్ ఓన్లీ వన్ ఆన్సర్ కవి ఆల్ త్రీ రామకృష్ణ త్రీ మహి ఓన్లీ టూ yes try all all students should give the answer shall I reveal the answer correct answer here is only to congratulations for the students who gave answer only to so first correct answer is by aditya and second is by charan congratulations okay it is not to defend okay and next topic is philippines condemns illegal actions by china's boards or chinese boards in south china sea so here you have to focus on this keyword south china sea so how many of you know about the importance of the south china sea importance of south china sea yes it is important from transport and trade next yes from maritime security point of it is important as the most of the trade which happens to the south china sea only and let me know what are the issues in the south china sea issues one is nine dash line next China is claiming almost all islands so can you tell me important islands which are claimed by this uh, China in this south china sea so there are three islands that you have to remember so please let me know the name of those three islands parcel and very good next yes nine dash line very good new china map very good kavi and mahi next spartly island very good shrinivasan very good pranesh next okay nagesh it is new china map in new china map it is uh, climbing entire this nine dash line next spartly next parcel island next is carbok island Okay let us see this topic and this topic is also important from international relations which comes under this GS paper 2 so these are the chinese ships they are moving in the south china sea so because of this philippines says that it is affecting territorial sovereignty of this philippines if you see context it says that philippines condemned illegal actions by this chinese vessels after the boats they allegedly interfered in another resupply mission to a remote military outpost in disputed south china sea so what happened in this disputed south china sea there is increased presence of chinese vessels or seen so because of this countries which are sharing boundary with the south china sea they are opposing this move of china 
Yes, very good, Nagesh. And if you see details regarding the South China Sea, South China Sea is one of the busiest waterways in the world. And it is very much important for trade, merchant shipping route. And in the South China Sea also, there are some maritime disputes and island claims is seen between the region sovereign states. That means countries are sharing boundary with this uh, uh, South China Sea. So they are having issues regarding claiming of islands. And these disputes are present between China, Brunei, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, etc. in this Indo-Pacific region. So is it clear? These are some facts regarding the South China Sea that you have to remember. And next let us see the map of the South China Sea. So this is South China Sea and this line is the 9 dashed line. So I said that there are three islands which are disputed areas, right? So here we have Parcel Island, here we have Scarborough uh, Shoal Island, here we have Spartley. And you have to arrange them from north to south and south to north. So in this we also UPSC can ask question. So in north we have Scarborough in middle Parcel and in last Spartley Island. So this line is the 9 dash line. So now Philippines says that whenever the south, this Chinese ships are moving here, okay, the Chinese ships are moving here, what happened is affecting this territory sovereignty of Philippines. Okay, so here countries like Malaysia here, Brunei, Vietnam, okay, and here we have Philippines, and here we have China, there we have Taiwan, so they are sharing boundary with this South China Sea. And now let us see here reasons for the disputes and disputes between which and which countries. So for example, we have parcel islands. So regarding this parcel islands, the dispute is between China, Taiwan, Vietnam. So these countries are uh, claiming this parcel island. And so this partly island is claimed by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Brunei and Philippines. And this one is Scarborough Shoal Island is claimed by Philippines, China and Taiwan. So these are some important things that you have to keep in the mind. What are dash lines ma'am? I heard about 9, 10 dash lines. Okay, so I will explain that concept. So here we have China, right? So this part which comes under South China Sea. So China started building some artificial islands. And according to UNCLOS, United Nations Law of Convention of Seas, it says that for any country till 200 nautical miles, it comes under the jurisdiction of that country. So China, it is building artificial island. And it says that these islands are built by, by me. So this islands which comes under China. So here till 200 nautical miles from these islands, it comes under China. So because of this, it drawn nine dash line and said that this entire area which comes under territorial, ter uh, territorial jurisdiction of this China. So this lines, these are imaginary lines. So they are called as nine dash line. Is it clear Srinivasan? Okay, is it clear? And now let us see South China Sea, why it is strategically important. So because of this geographical location, it connects Indian and Pacific Ocean. So because of this, this is very, very important. And even UNCTAD, that is United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said that one third of global shipping, which is carrying trillions of dollars in trade, which is moving in this geopolitical water. So because of this, it is very, very important. Okay, so this is about the significance of this South China Sea. And next topic is India's forex reserves jumped to 598.89 billion from 403, 4.03 billion. So here you have to focus on what is this forex reserves. And you have to see what all comes under this forex reserves. So tell me, do you know about this forex reserves? Hmm? 
not exactly foreign investment Srinivasan no idea Aditya next anyone at least you don't know so please tell me I don't know so that we are going to have discussion on that so my aim it is to make everything clear even static point of view also no ma'am okay I heard only about forest reserves no idea Hari okay Rupee in terms of dollar, Shakti. Okay, let us try to see this. Uh, many students are saying that no idea. Okay, so this topic is important from your economy, which comes in the GS paper 3. And you have to know about this foreign exchange reserve or forex reserves. And this comes out of your static syllabus. And many a times the questions which following comes to this forex result. And foreign portfolio investment, Nagesh, it is entirely different. So if you see context, it says that India's forex reserves jumped by 4.039 billion to 598.897 billion. For uh, if you see this data, it is according to the September 1st. So this is the thing which mainly said by our reserve bank. So forex reserves are also called as foreign exchange reserves. So they are nothing but they are assets. They are, has, they are assets which are held on reserve by our RBI. Central bank is nothing but RBI in foreign currencies. So in this forex reserves, so we will be having bonds, treasury bills and other government securities that needs to be noted that most foreign exchange reserves they are maintained in US dollars okay is it clear so this these are the reserves which are present with RBI very good Jagan Manju it is not about import and export Okay, and here you have to see India's forex reserves what all include. So we have foreign currency assets, we have gold, we have special drawing rights. So the special drawing rights will be present with IMF. Okay, so these will be included under this forex reserves. So already question which asked regarding this what all will come under this forex reserves. Okay, Venkatesh. Okay, so these are the some things that you have to remember and I want to show about this main translating course that we came up in this Rathod's IS. So here in this course, we are providing daily answer writing practice for beginners and the students who are facing problem with mains and students who already gave the attempt but they are lagging because of this improper answer writing skills. And if you are a working professional, so you will be not getting much time to write test series, right? So for all those students, so this will be very important. And here in this course, the validity will be one year. So for next one year, we are going to give you a detailed schedule or plan. So based on that, you will be preparing. And if you follow this plan, that, that will be helpful to cover entire your GS syllabus along with current FIs related to that topics within one year along with answer writing practice. So even if you are not having the proper content, we are providing you the modal answer. So with this help of modal answer, you can easily answer those questions. And one more thing here is detailed evaluation of answer will be done and we will be giving you the feedback like where you are going wrong. So where you are doing well. So what can be added, what can be deleted. So if there is any data or report. So whether if you are missing or not, we will be seeing that and we will be giving you the detailed feedback. And one more thing here is we are going to have live interactive sessions. So in that interactive sessions, we will be asking your perspectives and you will be responding to that so that there will be improving of communication skills also, especially students who are getting very much fear regarding this answer writing and regarding uh, loss, regarding like lack of communication skills. So this course is absolutely beneficial for you. So try to join this. And the cost of this course here is 8,200 rupees. And even if you can't pay this amount in one go, you can pay in two, uh, two installments. 
yes there will be essay writing also will be included on every sunday on every sunday you will be having essay or case study okay shruti do worry <laughs> okay and if you want to purchase this course you can visit our website rathor science academy there you have to sign up for the first time and later on click on the courses and at last you can see this poster that is daily main translating course and you can join the course there itself or else you, if you have any doubt please call me on this number 8074765513 okay so that i will be resolving your doubts regarding this course and one more thing is if you have any doubts regarding this current affairs so please post me on this number or you can post in the comment box once the session is concluded so that in on monday's class we are going to discuss this doubts okay is it clear and now let us move back to our hindu newspaper So in this page, you can see 14 crore deprived of food entitlements due to lack of census. So because of lack of census, so in 2021, census had not been conducted because of delay due to COVID-19. So because of this COVID-19, census has been delayed. So because of this, around 14 crore people they lost or they are deprived of food entitlements. So what is the relationship between census and this food deprivation? so we have this national food security act right so under this act beneficiaries will be identified based on the census so this is the idea regarding this article what is the tomorrow schedule i didn't get you again so please can you elaborate on that so here you have to focus on national food security act and as well as census and you have to think like what are the reasons for delaying of census so most of these articles are political articles and i discuss this topic okay and here you can see rhino horn recovered in assam's baksa district so here you have to talk about illegal trading and poaching of animals so illegal trading and poaching of animals is normally the one problem that we can see and you have to see what are the measures can be taken what are the measures can be taken to address this issue yes doubt clearing session only on monday at 8 pm yeah sunday also at 9 am only class will be there for sure so there will be no holiday on sunday also for you and for me also okay here you have to think about those things in the world page i discussed about that south china sea article in this business page i discussed about this forex reserves article so these are the important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper i don't have any weekend shrinivasan that's all for today so if you really like this video hit the like button and don't forget to hit the like button and one more thing is share this video to your friends also in either whatsapp groups or telegram groups so that that will increase the reach and if you are visiting this rathod size for the first time hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting the notifications So thank you so much for attending the session and try to join this main translating course. So we are going to meet on live there.